a KQED HD production. Seventy-two miles north of San Francisco, a sprawling tangle of power plants, pumps, and pipes work nonstop to mine steam from the ground and convert it into electricity. The geyser has been producing geothermal power since the 1960s. It produces enough power to power all of San Francisco, about equivalent to one medium-sized nuclear power plant. At more than 20,000 football fields in size, the geysers is the world's largest geothermal field. But for nearly 50 years, it's been generating more than just clean, renewable energy. This green line dash line here is the amount of earthquakes over magnitude 1.5, and you see it has a pretty good correlation with the amount of fluid injected here. The injected fluid is roughly 20 million gallons of treated wastewater from nearby Santa Rosa and Lake County that are pumped daily into the ground to replenish the steam fields. The importance of this is it allows us to really say, all right, human activity is causing the activity of the earthquakes. That's right. Humans can actually cause earthquakes. The uh, crust of the Earth is essentially in a state of natural tectonic stress that brings it close to the point at which natural earthquakes can occur. And uh, all it takes in most areas is a little extra push, a little extra stress introduced in the right way on pre-existing faults and fractures to cause small earthquakes. That little extra push happens when humans mine, pump, drill, and dam to generate energy. The oil and natural gas industry, for example, has been generating earthquakes for decades. In the 1930s and 1940s, near Long Beach, California, although there were a lot of earthquakes, or seismicity as we call it, associated with oil production, the real smoking gun was when you could stop the seismicity by putting water back into the ground to replace the oil. So that's when people say, oh, it's really human activity that's causing this. It's not a coincidence. The earthquakes are a byproduct of a process called hydrofracture to extract oil and gas. The pressurized fluid opens up the oil and gas-rich rocks, pushing them apart. And as the rocks move, energy is released, generating small earthquakes. Even filling up a reservoir behind a dam too quickly can cause earthquakes, and occasionally to deadly effect. In putting water behind dams, you cause a greater loading on the earth. And if there happens to be some faults there, pre-existing faults, then you can cause larger earthquakes. For example, in India, at Koina Dam, there was over a magnitude six earthquake that killed over 200 people. That was in 1967. More recently, some suspect that a dam built in Sichuan, China may have hastened the arrival of a 7.9 earthquake that killed tens of thousands in 2008. If you happen to go to an active fault, that active fault will naturally produce large earthquakes, and if you perturb it at the right time and in the right place, you might trigger that natural earthquake sooner rather than later. The risk of a similarly massive earthquake ripping through the Bay Area triggered by geothermal work at the geysers is not likely, according to scientists. If you look at the San Andreas Fault, it's hundreds of miles long, and we have big earthquakes along that fault. The faults and fractures up at the geysers are very small. They range from maybe tens of meters to hundreds of meters long, maybe a kilometer long. And that's not large enough to support a large earthquake up at the geysers. Maybe not, but the sheer number of the earthquakes at the geysers is staggering. This is an animation of about a month's worth of data from a geothermal well at the geysers. There's about 750 events here. The largest one here is about a magnitude two, but the great majority are less than a magnitude one or around a magnitude one. Most of the quakes are too tiny for people to even feel, but some can be felt three miles away from the geysers in Anderson Springs, keeping some residents up at night, quite literally. We average earthquakes of magnitude two or larger about one a day. Um, and of earthquakes that people can be woken up with that will shake the house pretty strongly, that's easily every, every couple of days. 
Hi, Jeff. So this is not a once in a blue moon thing. This is a constant problem that has really changed people's lives. As president of the Anderson Springs Community Alliance, Jeff Gosby visits with neighbors to see the toll the earthquakes take on their property and peace of mind. Look at this. Wow. So this actually goes not only through the cinder blocks, but into the actual poured foundation. By the way, there was an earthquake not too long ago that hit and it woke me up. My heart was pounding and I didn't get to sleep for the rest of the night because of the adrenaline rush. According to Gosby, those adrenaline rush inducing earthquakes are on the rise. Going back to 1975, up until 2003, there'd only been nine magnitude four earthquakes. We've had 15 magnitude four or larger earthquakes since 2003. Even though we're assured that earthquakes above a five can't be created here, what if larger earthquakes do happen? And look at that. Nine miles away, Calpine, the largest company working at the geysers, is expanding operations with a new way to tap the Earth's bounty of heat. Calpine has started a project called an Enhanced Geothermal System, or EGS project in the northwest portion of the geysers. We're going to inject water into an area about 11,000 foot depth, and that area is very, very hot. What it will allow us to do is tap heat at the geysers that was previously unavailable. If enhanced geothermal systems can be developed, all we need to do is to find the hot rock, which is ubiquitous almost everywhere in the western United States. Geothermal energy generates very little smog or greenhouse gases. And unlike solar or wind, it can produce electricity 24 hours a day. The Department of Energy estimates that enhanced geothermal could generate 10 percent of the nation's electricity needs. But it's not without challenges. For one thing, in a traditional geothermal field, the steam already exists. But in an enhanced geothermal system, the steam reservoir must be created. Man-made earthquakes are a consequence of microfracturing the hot, dry rock to circulate water through it and pick up the heat. Just by the nature of fracturing rock, you are creating microearthquakes. The approach is to create a lot of very small earthquakes, many of which will not be felt we're putting additional seismic monitoring in this area to really be able to pinpoint where the fracturing is taking place to effectively generate steam. Ernie Major from the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory is working with Calpine to monitor the seismic activity in real time. I'm standing next to a seismic monitoring station. It takes the signal from a geophone that picks up the motion of the ground. And that motion of the ground is then transferred into this box. The incoming data then allows rapid communication of quake activity, not only at the geysers, but at six other federally funded enhanced geothermal sites. Hey Steve, this is Ernie. We've been noticing quite a bit of seismicity, a lot of earthquakes going on at Raft River. Do you see that? Yeah, I see that there's some earthquakes there, but uh, they're coming from outside of our network. The engineers can scale back the water injection if the earthquakes are getting too big. Well, let's keep an eye on it and make sure that things don't get out of hand. Managing the size of the earthquakes is not only vital to the success of the projects, it's also vital to public acceptance. In 2006, an enhanced geothermal project was shut down after it triggered a 3.2 earthquake in downtown Basel, Switzerland. Motivated by the Basel experience, Ernie Major helped write a set of federal guidelines to help manage the risk of induced seismicity. You don't want to put it close to a very large fault. You don't want to put it in the middle of a large city. The industry has finally woken up to the fact that induced seismicity is a major issue and it could be a deal breaker if not dealt with properly. Calpine is heeding the advice while moving full steam ahead. We do not believe this enhanced geothermal system will create a, an increase in felt earthquakes. If you look at the active faults in the area and you look at your injection and production activities, I think it's an appropriate risk in order to capture the benefits of this large renewable energy resource. 
And as we work to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels while meeting growing energy demands, the need to strike a balance between risks and benefits grows more urgent. Any source of energy production, including renewable energy, has its benefits and drawbacks. And the energy mix the United States has in the future will depend on the choices we make regarding how we balance those benefits and drawbacks, whether it's solar energy, wind, nuclear, hydropower, or geothermal.